Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Camp Spare Guy podcast. As you can see, we're in a new studio today and I'm super excited to share some amazing insights with you. Today we've got an amazing guest, Leo Flores, on the podcast. Can't wait to get into this one. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome Leo Flores to the Camp Spare Guy podcast today. Leo is the founder of Flores and Partners, established in 2007 in London and specializing in high-end buy-to-let investment properties. With hands-on experience in all aspects of prime London property, Leo has risen from an agent to a partner and head of sales, overseeing multiple successful estate agency teams. You might even recognize him from the BBC show Home Under the Hammer, where he shared his expertise as the local West London property expert. Over the, over the past few years, Leo has been a huge advocate and valuable advisor for foreign buyers investing in Cape Town's property market. With over 628 deals brokered, Leo is an industry legend, and I am, ex I am so excited to have him on the podcast today. Welcome to the Camps Bay Guy podcast, Leo. Let's get into the show. Cheers, Josh. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Great to have you here. Yeah, cheers. cheers. <laughs> yeah, super keen to have this chat. On this hot day, yeah. we need some ice to cool us down. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, Leo, I can't wait to hear all about your story. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and your background in real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So, South African born, Cape Town my whole life. And um, I used to, well, I started a very successful uh, nutrition, sports nutrition specialized outlet in Cape Town in, uh, two th in the year 2000. Uh, we built that together with a partner and successfully sold that in 2007. And then my wife said to me, it's time to, to spread our rings and go and travel. Because when I was young, I started that business when I was 19 years old. Wow. So I had my head down crunching numbers while most of my friends were on gap years, <laughs> traveling the world and having a bit of fun or you know, straight into university. And I never had a chance to do either. So um, we decided to go to London. And uh, uh, long story short, the property that we acquired, our first residence in West London, um, the agency that we got that property from, I became quite friendly with them. And um, they, uh, the owner at the time had just acquired the business. It was called Shaw's Estate Agency in, in West Kensington. Uh, we became quite friendly. And uh, one day he said, you know, you'd make a great estate agent. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it was not a career choice that I was thinking about at the time. And yeah, um, and yeah I said, okay, great. Well, if you prepared to train me um, and give me a bit of mentorship and a bit of guidance, it sounds like fun. Um, obviously, it's a very lucrative industry in the UK. And I thought, well, I'm over here. It's a new country, new everything. I might as well try a new career path and got into agency then. I wow. started at, at the very bottom. Um, I was wow. probably one of his worst employees, and we laugh about it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> he had me doing admin, which was sure. quite fun. <laughs> but uh, that only lasted about three months. And sure. then from there, I moved into doing a bit of rentals, a little bit of sales. But it took me about all of what, I think it was about two years, and I was essentially running that office for him in the sales team. Wow. And uh, we focused on West London, and um, it was a lot of fun. I just sure. fell in love with agency then. And I knew that, okay, this is the career path that I, I want to take for myself. And Amazing. still to this day, I'm very good friends with the owner of the business, John Reed. I'm ever grateful to him giving me the opportunity. So, wow. yeah. And, and what do you think um, contributed to you rising? I mean, that's unheard of. Somebody rising from almost nothing to becoming, to basically running an office. What, do you, yeah. what characteristics do you think make, made you get, get yeah, there? Yeah. It's a good question. I mean, I, you know what? I had no idea of what the, 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 the industry was all about. So I thought, yeah. well, all I can do is bring in my own sort of tenacious South African, you know, mindset to the role and just, yeah. just go for it, you know. Um, I don't think I had any idea of what I was doing at the time, to be quite honest with you. I was just being Leo, <laughs> you <laughs> know, and making sure that I give everyone an amazing customer experience. And yeah, I think yeah. that, that was probably, yeah, probably the thing. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And what was it like living and working in London? I know you still do a lot of business and you yeah. still travel to London quite a bit. Yeah. Obviously, you split a bit between 
um, Cape two cities, Town, yeah. two cities, Cape Town and London. But what's it like when you when you first move there and you're living and you're working there? Um, yeah, yeah, give us a little bit. Little so bit, uh, yeah, I think London is a, a presents as a huge opportunity for any young professional. You know, um, we never had any kids. It was a really great place to be. Um, traveling is so much easier, and the UK is structured for traveling. You know, you. you we can do this podcast now and we can be in Ibiza tonight, you know, <laughs> having yeah, fun. It's yeah. that that's really how London is is structured as a city. So travel's so easy. So living there was amazing. You know, there's yeah. always something to do. It's a very busy city with there's a little bit to cater to everybody's needs. You know, yeah, if yeah. you into sport, there's a there's a huge sport community. And if you're into theater, there's that too. So yeah. it, it was a fun place. I love it. It'll always be my home and I'm ever, ever grateful and indebted to the yes. lessons that I've learned uh, whilst living there. Amazing. Yeah. And so do you think that those are the things that why... So I've seen a massive exodus of young South Africans, people my age, that are, are going over to the UK to work. Um, do you think it's, it's that that's drawing them, them there? And obviously, obviously the power of having the pound and then yeah. maybe coming <laughs> back in 20 years and being able to buy a massive mansion in Bishop's Court or something... <laughs> Um, yeah, that's definitely the dream. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I think, again, you know, um, there's a number of factors, I think, that contribute to that, Josh. I think English, first language, it's easy to communicate with people over there. Um, yeah. I think the time difference, you know, uh, there's an hour in the summer, two hours in the winter between yeah. us. Um, getting there is not too challenging anymore. You know, there's no stopovers yes. in Joburg. BA do direct flights from Cape Town straight to London Heathrow. Um, and then there's job opportunity. I yeah. mean, you, you get paid well over there for what you do. And there's, you know, unemployment, I think, sits at about 4 or 5%. Wow. So there's so much opportunity for young professionals. And I think that yes. is a big draw card for most South Africans right now. Um, that you get over there, you can travel, you can get a job quite easily, and they love South Africans. Yeah. They know we're hardworking, they know <laughs> why we're there, and they love to give us opportunities. And we, we, we actually excel. Most South Africans that I know that have gone over to the UK have actually done very well for themselves. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think I've seen that as well. Yeah. And, and what do you think the biggest shock for South Africans is when they first move to the UK? Weather. <laughs> 100%. It's cold. <laughs> you cold don't see gray, the sun. Not a yeah. lot of daylight. It's, it's definitely yeah. just the weather. Um, you know, I think the climate is a challenge for anyone born in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, yeah. And I think for most, you know, most of my South African friends and colleagues, by November, they sort of, you know, itching yeah. to go and travel somewhere and just top up on vitamin D. But other than that, it's a very easy city to um, to sort of settle yourself in, you know. And we're very welcomed there. And um, yeah, as I said, you know, it's it's not a it's not a difficult place to live. To be honest, it's actually a very easy place to live. Things yeah. work. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I love I love the city as well. I've been there a few times. So yeah, yeah such a great place. Yeah. And how did you end up getting onto Homes Under the Hammer <laughs> on the BBC? They actually just approached us. Um, okay. that's what they do. They go and yeah. approach local estate agencies in the area because they want it to be real and authentic. Yes. So yes. they approach real estate agents. And we're not actors, <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. gonna we say it how it is. Um, but yeah, they approached our business and um, I guess you know, I was quite comfortable being in front of the camera, and so they yeah. asked me for a few more episodes. So, yeah, okay. it was quite Amazing. fun actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lovely. And do you have any crazy stories from the show? From that particular show? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, not really. No, yeah, no, not yeah. really. I mean, it's it's just your stock stand and nothing, nothing, no. uh, nothing selling sun, no. nothing like I selling mean, sunsets. Eh? No, 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 nothing <laughs> like that at all. I mean, really, what it's it's yeah. more a show that I think is structured to like an investor audience, yeah. not so much a glamorous audience. Where yeah. selling sunsets is definitely more glamorous. Where homes yeah. under the hammer at the time um, when I was on on set, you could feel. You know, I had to provide stats, and I had to provide a valuation for the property in its current yes. condition, and then once it was renovated. Yes. So they would invite you around when it was unmodernized, and then they would invite me around again when it was modernized. Wow. And that was quite fun. You get to see something transform, which was quite, quite, quite cool to see. And the valuations, were they, would they vary quite drastically? Or can you, and because I know in London, um, you used to be able to like buy a place for let's say 700,000 pounds in central London on a mm. great street, and you could put a, 
couple of hundred thousand in and then you can sell it for two million is are, are we still seeing that and yeah and absolutely okay. absolutely is look with london if you can add square foot to the property you're going to make a return because your building costs well i'm going to reference west london because that's yes. where i was a specialist yeah. if your building costs was about 400 pound a square foot your your sale value is around a thousand pound a square foot so wow. there's always margin. So when you buy real estate in the UK, provided you can add square foot, you're going to see a healthy exit. Wow. That's for sure. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And what are the major differences between the UK property market and the South African property market? I think it's volume. I just think yeah. it's volume based. You know, um, the amount of properties that change hands in London um, I always say this to everyone. If you consider your parents and, and their home and how many years they've probably lived in their home, you probably find that it's 20 years, you know, in yeah, the same yeah. home. Where in London, it's like a five-year sort of change of hands. And sure. that's why I think that it's just volume-based. Um, well, yeah. that was my experience and talking to friends and family. It's just, yeah, things just happen so much quicker. You yeah, buy your yeah. first apartment in London, one bed, you, know, you keep yeah. it for five years and you sell it. And yes. the cycle just keeps going on as you, your family grows. But yeah. it's, yeah, it's a very fast-paced real estate market, that's for sure. Amazing. And tell us a little bit more about your work with South Africans looking to invest in the UK. And what areas of the, of the UK are you advising your South African clients to invest in at the moment? Sure. So, I mean, historically, I've advised South Africans buying in the UK. That was, you know, the main, yeah. the main role that I... I played um, and built up a successful business doing that. Um, what I realized over time is that more and more British clients would, you know, be envious of the fact that I was raised and born up in Cape Town and yes. all of them would say the same thing, you know, Cape Town, amazing, being there, the food, the weather. And so I took advantage of that and I started helping amazing. that British audience realize that I'm South African, I'm back here, grew up here, know these streets well. And so I'm now advising a lot of British buyers buy here successfully and make good investments. Well, um, and the appetite for investment is, I would say, lifestyle property. Yeah. Um, they're looking for something that they can enjoy, use on holiday, um, and you know, sort of perhaps create a bit of an Airbnb um, income stream with that property when they're not using it. Amazing, amazing. This podcast is sponsored by Vanzel Kruger Attorneys. Vanzel Kruger Attorneys have been my number one supporter since the first day that I started in the real estate industry. They've always been there for my clients when critical questions around the transfer of a property have come up. And I'm super grateful to them for sponsoring this podcast. If you are looking for a transferring attorney on your next sale, please consider Vanzel Kruger Attorneys. They won't let you down. So, yeah, thanks again to Vanzel Kruger Attorneys for sponsoring the podcast. And yeah, it wouldn't be possible without them. And how hard is it to make it in the real estate industry in the UK? I know you worked there for quite a long time. So yeah, um, yeah building your network and, and, and things like that, yeah. obviously coming from having nothing yeah. and no network in, in that place, it must have been, what was your strategy? How did you go about that? Yeah. So look, it's, it's an agency in the UK versus South Africa is just so different, Josh. You know, it's, it's very much you work in a corporate environment. The corporate companies that you work for have got incredible databases built over, you know, decades and decades and decades. So you, you get a patch and you're able to climb into those databases. Yeah. You farm no different, I think. Yeah, you hit yeah. the phone. <laughs> you yeah. hit the phone hard. The difference maybe is, is that it's maybe a little bit longer hours, I would think. Um, yes. But other than that, I don't think there's a huge difference. It's still old-fashioned agency. You know, you're still going to be on yes. the phone, and the more calls you make, the more doors are going to open up, and the more sales you're going to make. So, yes, yes. Um, for me, it was probably just getting to my meetings in the icy cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was probably the biggest challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow, amazing! Yeah. It sounds like a proper experience it was. working over there, yeah, yeah, and absolutely. it uh, gave you a great foundation absolutely. in the real estate in the industry. Yeah. And and how do you describe the current real estate market in Cape Town, particularly for the, obviously you said there's quite an appetite. Yeah. So how, do you think there's more international people coming into Cape Town and buying up properties? And do you think that's going to increase in, in the future? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can see the level of registrations with our business now that Cape Town as a city is definitely on the global map. And we're seeing a huge amount, and not only British buyers, but we're getting inquiries from, you know, from French, from Italians, from Germans. And it's interesting how they're finding us, I guess, yeah. kudos to our marketing team. But wow. there's definitely appetite here. And they're seeing value for money. You know, Cape Amazing. Town is still a very undervalued city compared to other cities around the world. Yes. So you can buy something really nice here with your sterling or your euros or your dollar. Yeah. Um, and I think there's huge appetite, you know. Amazing. I, I don't yeah. think it's going to change. I think it's just going to continue. You know, we've been voted the second best city in the world to live recently. So for I sure. guess there's reasons for that, right? There <laughs> is the exchange rate as well, Absolutely. which is, is helping them. They're getting so much. You can probably get maybe yeah. a little... A shoebox in yeah. London for what you, and for what you can buy a little a garage, villa. <laughs> yeah, a garage yeah, in London, absolutely. and you can maybe get a nice moderate villa, absolutely. humble villa in Camps Bay or, or somewhere. Yeah, for the absolutely. Same price, and so I think that's exactly it. You know, I think a lot of foreigners are coming here on holiday, um, or at least for our clients, which are predominantly British, they're coming on holiday. They're realizing what you know, what what great value they can get here, and the lifestyle. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I definitely don't think they're doing it for any kind of you know wealth creation, but more just for leisure and enjoyment, yeah, um, yeah. and parking a bit of cash offshore, I guess, in a different country. So yeah. for sure. And how are you finding working on that specific end of the deal? Because um, maybe uh, when you were working as an agent in the UK, you're more used to working as the listing agent. Now, obviously, yeah. with um, <laughs> foreigners coming in, how yeah. how's that aspect of it of it of it working for you? And, and are you finding it a bit challenging? You know, obviously having to work with other agents and the culture in South Africa where you protect your commission and things I'll, like that. I'll tell you one thing that's very refreshing, is that, <coughs> hey, I think the quality of estate agents in South Africa are great, and I think it's partly because it's a regulated industry. It's not regulated in the UK. Wow. Anybody can be an estate agent. You don't need to be registered to any board or wow. have any license to be able to trade as an estate agent. Okay. Sure. So for me, in my experience, it's been very refreshing. Agents here operate with a lot of integrity and they definitely, you know, they, they're keen to do business as well, which is great. Yes. So for me, I find it very refreshing. Secondly, in the UK, buying real estate in the UK is the most stressful thing for anybody because it's a bidding market. Yeah. It, a deal is not done until contracts have exchanged where my British clients are loving the system in South Africa because once you sign a deal and there's, yeah. you know, and there's no subject to's, the deal is done. Yeah. And it kind of, you know, it, 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 it's just so refreshing. Uh, it's less stressful, that I can say. So, yeah. Amazing, yeah. So you, you <laughs> prefer it here than I over do. there. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, I do, lovely. yeah, I absolutely do. I mean, if you'd like to give, if I can give you a little example, um, when you get an offer in, in the UK on a property, that yeah. is considered under offer, right? The seller is still entitled to accept any offers from anybody. And that's where the famous word gazump came into play. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Never heard okay, of that It's a before. British term. It's a swear word. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's a term used when someone comes and bids more on a property that wow. is under offer um, and, and unfortunately, the seller decides to run with the higher offer. Sure. So it's, it's a very, very stressful environment to work in because until contracts wow. are exchanged, you're exposed. <clears throat> and any yeah. agent can present a seller with an offer during that period. And are there a lot of like open mandates sort of, sort of things? So like a lot of different agencies listing the same property. So you kind of don't know when somebody's going to come and blindside you with a, another much. offer. Pretty much. Yeah. You can That's go scary. knock on someone's door today and if it's an open mandate, you can present them an offer and you wow. can gazump someone. Sure. So it, it's always, yeah, for me, it was stressful. <laughs> it was really the stressful. deal's really not done until the sure, deal's done. I until promise the you. Deal's done. To sure. all the solicitors exchange contracts, you are exposed and you will lose that deal. Wow. So yeah, you always got your boxing gloves on. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, moving back to the Cape Town, what key pieces of advice would you offer to foreigners considering, considering buying property in Cape Town or South Africa in general? I think the most important thing a foreigner needs to pay attention to is location. You know, yeah. um, For me, I just make sure that I look at the, the area that they're looking to invest in. Look, I've got yeah. to be their eyes and ears because they're not here and it's yes. my responsibility to make sure that when I do say to them, hey, here's a great opportunity, 
that yeah. I've done my due diligence and it really, I'm presenting them with something solid. Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they do fly down, but a lot of the properties that I sell are off plan. Equally in the UK, almost wow. 80% of our business is done off plan now. Um, and it's pure investment. Amazing. So I focus on, on location, you know, and I make sure that wherever we park their money, it's going to be a property that it's going to be very easy that if they're not around, we can earn some income for them. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So it's more, it's focusing on that income aspect. Correct. And as well as the lifestyle aspect. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You've got to find Amazing. that balance for them. Amazing. And what trends do you kind of foresee in the South African real estate mar market, especially when it concerns those, those foreigners? Do you think, yeah, I mean, we've, I think mm. we've already touched on this, but yeah. anything Look, specific? Yeah. I think, you know, again, I would say 85% of the clients registering with us are not looking for investment. Yeah, they yeah. know that South Africa is a volatile economy. So I yeah. would say the trend is very much, you know, to have a lifestyle property parked here that their kids can use, that they can use. Um, you know, getting here is very easy. So I would say the trend is definitely it must have a pool, must have yeah. two baths, two bed minimum. Um, and it must be around sort of the Atlantic seaboard, I would say, is definitely where we get everyone asking us, you know, Atlantic yeah. seaboard. Not really much outside of the city of Cape Town at the moment. I see, I yeah. see. Okay. And the exchange rate just hit 24 Rand. Beautiful. We, we all know <laughs> that. Obviously, it's great for us. For all of us. Foreigners now. <laughs> yeah. It's not so great for those that are, that are trying to, that, that bought properties maybe mm. five years ago. Um, yeah. And now want to repatriate their funds, but yeah. how do you how do you com how do you combat the ever changing exchange rate volatility um, as a foreign investor in South Africa? And do you think that it will ever improve? Uh, do you think South Africa is a risky investment for foreigners because of that exchange rate? So look, so as far as risk is concerned, I don't think my clients are not too concerned about the risk yeah. because they buy cash. Yeah. People aren't gearing investments through, at least through our business. They're not asking us to assist them with mortgage or, 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 or you say bond um, finance. Yes, it's yes. cash purchases. It's lifestyle purchases. So I don't think they're paying too close attention to the risks, to be honest. Yeah. As long as I do enough due diligence on the developer and mm. the development itself um, and make sure that it's in a good location, I think that's, that's enough for them to say, okay, fine, if I yeah. park 350,000 pounds, you know, and, and, and I lose a bit of money, it is what it is. They're yeah. not too concerned. I mean, it's no secret South Africa's economy is volatile. It is what it is. Yeah. So I, I don't have many clients that are buying on the premise saying, I'm looking for a massive return on investment. Yeah. Those clients, they're buying in London. You know, they're, they're looking buying, yeah, yeah, they're, they're looking they're elsewhere. Looking that they've almost written that money off. It's exactly. like, this is a lifestyle choice. Exactly. And the money's there. Absolutely. It's only if tough times yep. come and they, they need to yep. sell that asset, then that's going to be yep. a bit of a situation. Absolutely. And what um, we feel is as the exchange rate becomes more favorable, we yeah. see the inquiry levels go up. <laughs> yeah, It's exactly. that simple, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, for the UK side, that slows down a little bit. And that was one of the reasons why we diversified our business like this. Yeah, yeah. Because we felt that the minute the sterling hits 24 to 1, then we find the South African inquiries looking to diversify and invest in the UK would slow down. Yes, so at least yes. now our business is structured in such a way that it not it picks yeah. up this side. So it's it's yeah. it's, it's a blessing and so yeah. it's bal it's it's like balanced out. Absolutely. So, you know, no one wants yeah. to buy when yeah. you're at twenty four. You exactly. wait for it to come back below twenty if it if it does. Yeah. Um, I think it will. I yeah. think it will. We've got to be positive, you know. There's yeah. a lot of really cool things happening in our city. There's a lot of Definitely. you know, I mean I think if the eyes of the walls continue to focus on, you know, Cape Town the way it is, we've got to have hope for the rest of the country. You know, yeah. I mean, yes, I lived abroad for nearly 16 years, but I was proudly South African on the other side. You know, I, I, as yeah. you can hear, my accent is still very Cape Townian. Yes. <laughs> I haven't even lost it, you know, so, yeah. This podcast is sponsored by Home Loan Junction. Home Loan Junction are a bond originator, and if you don't know what a bond originator is, a bond originator will help you get finance for your next property purchase. They'll go to all the banks, get you the best interest rate, so that you don't have to go and barter and make sure that, and they'll make sure that you get the best deal for your next purchase. So if you're a foreigner or a local South African, Home Loan Junction will help you get the best finance for your purchase. Thank you so much to Home Loan Junction for sponsoring the podcast. It wouldn't be possible without you. Amazing. So 
we've reached the, the segment of the show called Ask the Agent. And this is where we get members of our audience to send questions for today's guests. Okay. So let's just jump straight into Stood. that. So what happens when a foreigner wants to sell their property in South Africa and repatriate the f their funds? How does that work? Okay, so I guess it's uh, someone like yourself that's going to handle that. <laughs> yeah. um, getting yeah. funds out of South Africa is not as challenging anymore. You know, yes. I think a few years ago it was. Um, you needed to get quite a lot of um, advice from a currency specialist. Um, you needed to get your SARS clearance certificate in place. And there was a number of things you needed to get in place. Um, and you were obviously restricted to how much money you could take out the country. But I would say over the last 10 years, there's some great currency companies that have popped up around South Africa. And they mm. literally do everything. You, yeah. you know, they really do hold the client's hand through uh, the entire process. So I think as long as you partnered with a good currency partner, you'll be okay. I don't think you'll have any problems Amazing. with your client getting the money out. So, yeah. so just find the right company. And when you buy, probably use the right company. Yeah, I mean, I'm well. partnered with, with yeah. two companies and I've used yeah. them, you know, for the last 10 years. I've had no issues. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's Amazing. just important. Find a real specialist in that field. Um, yeah. And there's a few of them around. I can't say them now, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Um, and then this, this one is from Alex. Is mm -hmm. it wise investing in South Africa slash Cape Town considering the political volatility and currency unpredictability as opposed to a country that would be considered to have more of a suitable currency? Mm. Uh, it's probably a very debatable question, Alex. You know, um, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to answer in two, two parts here. So as a local South African, I'm seeing, and Josh, you can probably you know, double up yeah. on this one, but I'm seeing a lot of young professionals see really handsome returns on the investments that they're making around the Atlantic seaboard. Yes. Um, there's some great companies that have popped up that are doing some really, really cool things. Yeah, um, yeah. And you can buy off plan and you can definitely see an uptake in you know, the 24-month period that it takes to build that development. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, from a, even from a, from a, a rentals perspective, the Cape yeah. Town, Cape Town city's on the map, you know, the Atlantic Definitely. seaboard's booming. Try and find yourself yeah. an Airbnb <laughs> at a reasonable rate. Good luck. Or a rental. <laughs> or a rental. Moment. You yeah, won't I feel find sorry a, for exactly. my uh, rental. Exactly. So I think moment. the city of Cape Town is, is undersupplied. Yeah, and yeah. that's the, the, the sort of factors that we take into consideration in the UK is that yeah. the UK market's so undersupplied, and that means that you have a nice, steady growth. Yeah. So I don't think the local market um, is not winning. I think the local Cape Town market is absolutely winning, and long may it continue. Yes. And then from the, my international clients buying here, I think I might have said it earlier, but they're not buying here with the view of investment. They're buying here with the view of lifestyle. Yes. And they're buying cash. So they're parking some cash here. They're, doing, they're, they're, they're enjoying the property. And hey, guess what? At the moment, the short-term rental market is so bananas and making great <laughs> money yeah. on those investments anyway. Yeah. So I think Cape Town presents it as an amazing investment case right now. And I think don't wait. For sure. Don't wait. Yeah. Get in. Get Buy, in. Get in the now. prices are going to go up. They're going to continue Definitely. going up 100%. 100%. Awesome. Thanks. And then what kind of loan can be achieved um, by a foreigner when they're investing in South Africa? So what... How, are they able to get 100% or... Yeah. No, unfortunately not. Um, and again, banks are risk averse, yeah, you know, yeah. because we're not a tier one economy, you know, um, banks have to look at risk. So yes. what we are able sec to secure, if clients are spending, you know, 25, 35, 40 million rands, banks want 50%. Yeah. And there are, there are loan books available for, you know, foreigners to purchase here. And there are banks that have always got appetite for it, but they look at the risk. Yeah. And they want 50%. Okay. And that's what we're yeah, able to secure yeah. for clients if they want to buy something and gear it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. And this is another, so I think we've almost already covered this question, but is it too late for South Africa or is the timing just right? I don't think it's ever too late for real estate. Okay, because no. if we go <laughs> back, we go back yes. and we talk about your parents, my parents, when they bought yeah. their homes. Yes. What are their homes worth now? Yeah, you no, know, 100%. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't think there's ever a wrong time. Just get in the market. Okay, stop yeah. trying to time the market. Yeah. Get in, buy something, buy real estate, and wait. Don't 100%. wait to buy real estate because <laughs> yeah. you'll never get on the property ladder. So yeah. no, I don't think there's a right or wrong time. 
Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna pay too much attention to the media and the doom mongers out there, guess what? You're gonna think South Africa's falling apart and you're never gonna buy. Well, guess yeah. what? I've come back, and I'm loving it being back here. <laughs> so yeah, there That's you are. Great to hear. And as my as my dad says, um, it's not about timing the market; it's about time in the market. Wise and words. That is the <laughs> wise words. That's the thing. <laughs> so where where do you think the next place is that's gonna take off? In on the well in Cape Cape in Town Cape Town. A, Cape Town area Western Cape mm. yeah um my gut feeling is the Western Seaboard I think yeah. it's the underdog I'm seeing Definitely. huge value out there still yeah um yeah I think at the moment I've been speaking to a lot of agents and they've been telling me that it's quite undersupplied at the moment for good seafront facing stock. Um, there's a huge foreign market that's been um, buying properties on the western seaboard as well. And I think on a rands per square meter value, I think yeah. at the moment it's presenting as very good value. 100%. Um, I believe the Joburg crowd have kind of seeked, <laughs> seeked their <laughs> pilgrimage down to the western yes, seaboard because yes. they come here and they realize they can buy a shoebox for what they sell their big home in Joburg for. Yeah, and yeah. I think that, you know, that, 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 that market, I've been watching it. I've been watching it for a while. I yeah. haven't advised any of my clients to buy there yet. Yes. I'm watching it, but I think this will be the year where I might start going to speak to a few developers out there, do a little bit more, you know, research on the area. I think it's one to watch. For I sure. I think there's some For opportunity sure. out there. Yeah. You've got everything out there. You've got the ocean, you've got yeah. the views of Table Mountain. Yes. You can get a nice little sunset and Absolutely. yeah, and 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 the price. I mean, yeah. what are buyers always trying to find? They're trying to yeah. find value in the market. If you can't af afford Atlantic Absolutely. Seaboard and you still want to be on the ocean, yeah, yeah, I think Western yeah, I think, Seaboard's your I next place. I think for young yeah. people who yeah. are looking for a lifestyle property and enjoy kite surfing and surfing and, you know, that they're looking yeah. for that type of lifestyle property, but they've sure. only got that sort of, you know, 80 yeah. to 150,000 euros or pounds to spend. Yeah. That can actually stretch really far on the Western Seaboard from the research I'm doing now. 100%. So, and equally, it also you can get you know the rental market seems to be doing fairly well. Yeah. So as the more research I do into it, I'll let you know. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and then, what do you think are the most popular properties and locations that foreigners are buying in? I think we've already touched on this one, but maybe yeah, yeah maybe go a little more in detail. I think, again, it's definitely um, close to amenities, walkable distance to good restaurants. Transport is important as well. Um, Got to have a swimming pool because that's, again, while they're buying from us, they're buying for lifestyle. So they all ask me, does the building have a pool? Is there a rooftop pool or bar? Or does the apartment offer us a small splash pool? But it's definitely important for it to have that sort of beachy, you know, sort of lifestyle yeah. type property. Um, and again, they want something sort of, well, we would say a thousand square foot, but a hundred square meters plus. Yes. Um, is what they want. They don't want a pokey property because guess what? That's probably what they have in London. Yeah. So they want something. Some space. They want some yeah. space, you know, something that they can bring their friends with them, you know, for a four or five week period in our summer months, enjoy it, um, and also perhaps, you know, make some money out of it um, when it's empty. So I would Lovely. say two bed minimum, anywhere along the Nazi board, swimming pool included. Amazing. Yeah. And then Winelands versus Cape Town. If you're looking in a price range between 1.7 and 2.5 million, where are you where are you buying? Um, look, I'm I'm all about sort of you know the the key investment fundamentals behind making a purchase in real estate. So, for me, it's foreign buyers. I'm going to be saying Atlantic Seaboard. The reason yeah. for that is I just haven't done enough research on the Winelands yet. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's offering the same capital appreciation as what the city is right now. Yeah. And, you know, those are important factors for us to sort of still take into consideration, even though buyers yeah. are not really too crazed about it. Um, maybe it's an area I need to be yeah. focused on. Maybe I'm missing maybe. a trick there. Vol de <laughs> Yeah, maybe <laughs> I am. <laughs> and then how would you advise an investor looking at financing a property investment in South Africa? Are you buying a two-bedroom or a bachelor flat? I think you already answered yeah, that one. I don't two think bedroom, it, 100 yeah, squares. Two, two bedroom, 100 squares. But yeah. if, you're, if you're looking for just to get into the market, don't shy yeah. away from those bachelor flats. Yeah, That's your yeah. foot in the door. You know, Definitely. take the emotion out and buy a bachelor flat because you will see the return on it too. So, yeah. 
hundred percent. And then we had Royden McRae on recently, the founder of Rest Easy Property Management. Mm-hmm. Um, and what role do you think property management services play in assisting foreign investors with the maintenance and rental aspects of their properties in Cape Town? Yeah, they play the biggest role. Yeah. Um, for, for my business, it is probably the most important role in our company. Because yeah. when you're making a purchase, especially a South African, when you're handing my organization, you know, four million South African rands to purchase that one bedroom apartment uh, somewhere in the UK, right? You, yeah, you, you're far away. You want to know that you've got a reliable set of eyes, you know, keeping a watch on the investment that you've made. And yeah. I think property management companies play a huge role. And yes. so, you know, without having, you know, a really, really good management team, I don't think our business would be possible. Yeah. Because people, you know, you, you want to know what's <coughs> happening to investment that side. You can get a bad tenant and how are you going to know about it? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I think they play a huge role. And I think for it's sure. the same in South Africa. Definitely. For my clients looking to purchase this way, there's no difference. We yeah. have to, I mean, I will personally go and look at a property if I have to for a client. I don't care. You know, yeah. for me, it's about giving that service. So the journey yeah. needs to be from start to very finish. You know, yes. and, and, and property management's massive. For yeah, sure. You have sure. to keep that client happy. That's that the way you're going to make your next deal. The maintenance and everything could go down on that property. You're Absolutely. not going to make a better, as good return. Absolutely. And then your, your client's not going to be happy when they come spend their holiday in Cape Town yeah. because, yeah, no, 100%. Absolutely. And then the real estate industry can be a daunting one. What advice do you have for young people looking to get into the industry? Young people? Um, that's a very good question. I think you're going to have to have a real sort of not give up mentality because this industry is like a yo-yo. You can be yeah. high one minute and you can be low one minute. So yeah. stay composed. Find a good mentor, someone that can give you guidance. I mean, I was very fortunate in the beginning of my career where, you know, I had a great, great mentor, not only from my first um, seat at Shaw's Estate Agents in Kensington, but my second seat, um, when I became head of sales uh, in Fulham, I had yeah. an amazing, amazing mentor. And he taught me that real estate, it's, if you always go back to basics, you're going to find that you're going to make money. Yeah, yeah. So if you're getting in this industry, I think do not be scared to be on the telephone. Yes. It's your best friend. <laughs> and, 100%. <laughs> and if you can't be on the telephone all day, be prepared to be out there knocking doors. Because yeah. you've got to be in front of clients or on the phone to clients. And you yeah. need to be prepared to take no a dozen times a day and pick up the phone and keep going. Because you're going to get sure. a lot of no's in your career. You know? And that if you can build a thick skin from taking a lot of no's, 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 you'll do very well in this industry. It's very yeah. rewarding. For me, I think the best thing about real estate is handing a set of keys over to someone and making the dream come true. Yes. And equally, from a wealth perspective, helping a client create wealth through real estate, super yeah. rewarding. Super, super rewarding. Yeah, there's nothing... It's, it's a great feeling to know that you've contributed to Absolutely. someone else's success. Absolutely. But yeah. you're going to have to be prepared to work hard. For sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. the days of the phone ringing... They're gone. It's not easy. You They're have call to. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we were actually chatting yeah. about, um, we had Richard Hardy on the podcast and we were chatting about oh, yeah. this with, with, with Richard. Um, and we were, we were saying, you know, when he was working in the UK, how it's all like you've got a, you've got a front of house who kind of takes all your incoming inquiries. You've yeah. got a valuer. And then yeah. once it's been valued, you then have the agent. So yeah. like your phone, they're feeding you leads, but you've yeah. got a, yeah. So like that was how the industry was set up there. I think. Correct. Um, but here in South Africa, completely so dog, dog so eat different. dog. And I think it's changed in the UK now as well. Yeah. Obviously, over 20 years. Absolutely. Was, yeah. The broker model is exploding in the UK now. And, you know, I've, I've, I've said it to everybody. And, you know, guys that I've employed over the years that have come from South Africa, come to London and have ended up working for me. I've yeah. told them, you're spoiled here. Yeah. British real estate agents are spoiled. You get given everything. You know, yeah. all you've got to do really is just make sure that you open the door and yeah, let the yeah. client see the property, but this, they're so spoiled. Where yeah, a South yeah. African estate agent, I think just be prepared to work hard, put in the hours, and if you can't get the person on the phone, go and knock on their front door. 
stalk 100%. them, find them on LinkedIn, find them on Facebook, <laughs> do what you got to do. That's, that's just the way the industry yeah. is, you know. Okay. But yeah, you're going to have to be t tenacious and patient. But the deals will come and it will be the best career choice of your life. 100%. Couldn't agree more. And what is the one thing you would focus, I guess you've kind of mentioned mentioned this, but yeah, you you said just, you know, you make make sure you're making your calls and yeah. knocking on doors, getting I into as many doors as you can. From a focus yeah. point of view, I've realized over the years that most salespeople lack structure. Yeah. Just bring structure into your day. The more structure you can bring into your day, the more success you're going to have, you know? Yeah. Um, we had a rule in London, which was don't leave your chair before 12.30. Sure. Okay, so from 8.30 in the morning till 12.30 noon, be on the phone, don't leave your desk, prepare, go through your emails, make all your phone calls, do your touting, you know, create those letters, do whatever you have to do and do it in the morning, get it out the way. And then from 12.30 for the rest of the day, go out and network, do your viewings, do your valuations, but bring structure in. And if yeah. you can get that sort of, you know, sort of structure right, it'll definitely make your career a lot easier. Amazing. And what inspires you and motivates you every day? My family. My daughter. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You want to leave a legacy. Uh, I'm working hard just for her. Amazing. <laughs> Hopefully she appreciates it. I'm not giving her a passport until she's 21. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, family is everything to me. So, you know, I just... Yeah. I would love to leave a legacy behind and I hope that, you know, one day she might follow in dad's footsteps, but I don't want to yeah. push it onto her. But, um, yeah. but yeah, fa I do it for my family. It's that simple. And I love it. Amazing. I love it. I don't feel like I'm going to work every day. That's I'm doing lovely. what I love. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what it's about. Absolutely. And when, what do you do when things get chaotic and stressful as they often do in the real estate industry? How do you kind of calm your mind and get yourself... Uh. Clear, it's a good clear. question. It's a good question, Josh. Um, I was probably one of the first guys to put a stand-up paddle in the River Thames <laughs> in London. <laughs> okay. I love the ocean. I love the yeah. water. So Stunning. in my free time, you'll find me in the ocean on a stand-up paddle, chasing wow. waves, or just you know, just being in nature. I Lovely. love it. And we're so blessed and spoiled in Cape Town that you, <laughs> you can yeah. do you can do so many different water activities in one day. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of find a place where an estate agent can leave their f mobile phone <laughs> and, yes. and not be contacted <laughs> on your phone is yeah. probably the place that brings me a little bit of calm. <laughs> so in the ocean, no one can call me, man. Amazing. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I do for free time. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of it. And, cool. and thanks so much for, for coming on the podcast. You've awesome. shared some amazing insights. Good. And yeah, I think we'll have you on again. It's been Thank great. You. And thanks, I Josh. really enjoyed chatting. So yeah. Likewise, cheers. cheers. Thank you very much for having me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Cheers. Cheers. Good.